الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد أدد كمال الله وكما يليك بكماله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب يسر ولا تعسر رب تمن بالخير سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم تب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم نويت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير ونفع والانتفاء والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وضع إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى وإلى حضرات النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Right, we are at page 28 today of our beloved, dear beloved son by Imam Abu Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad Al-Ghazali. And we are looking at the final benefit that is derived from the time spent by Al-Imam Hatim al Asam with his teacher Shaqiq Al-Balkhi. And today, it is very interesting because after this, because we are talking about uh, Imam Hatim al Asam and how he learned from his teacher, Shaqiq al Balkhi, then the next chapter is about looking for a spiritual guide, about having a teacher. So it is very, it is very nice. Uh, and, and some of us, some of you have actually asked about how you find a teacher, a proper spiritual guide. So today we're going to look at that. And it's very important for us to actually understand that one of the most pivotal things about uh, learning, learning religion is to ensure that you get a proper person to teach, uh, to teach the, the religion to you. The eighth benefit uh, 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 that Imam Hatim al Asam derived from his time spent with his teacher Shaqi, Shaqi al Balkhi is that I saw that everyone, so he noticed in his time, not, in our, not even in our time, in his time, everyone relied on some created thing. Some on the dinar and dirham means some people are into wealth accumulation. Some on wealth and property. Some on trade and craft. And some on creatures like themselves means what people indulge in things other than Allah SWT. Hmm. I meditated upon the saying of the exalted. Allah says in the Quran, and whosoever places his reliance on Allah, sufficient is Allah for him. For Allah will surely accomplish his purpose. Verily, for all things has Allah appointed a due proportion. I therefore place full trust in Allah the Exalted. He is sufficient for me and He is the best disposer of affairs. And this is an answer to a calamitous heart. A heart that is seeking serenity, looking for tranquility, is to have tawakal. To have reliance on Allah SWT and full reliance. And tawakal means that you, it is from the word wakala. It's from, it's from making Allah represent you. Right? And, uh, Allah says in the Quran, uh, when it is mentioned in the, in the Quran, right? Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. That enough, sufficient is Allah as our represent, as our representer. Alright? Sufficient Allah as a representation for us. Means what? With all the things, that we are represented by wealth. We are represented by a lot of things in life. Alright? By our friends, by our peers. Represented by our position. What does that mean? We always put our a lot of representations before us. Hi, I'm so and so. And you always have to follow up. It's not enough to say who you are. I'm so and so, I'm working here. I'm so and so, I have how many children? You always start off like that. I'm so and so, here's where I live. So these are putting representations before you. Why? Because you are not adequate. You always have to add up. Or you have to provide something. So if you go for a job interview, oh, I'm so and so, I have how many years of experience? All right. If you meet a, if you meet someone that you just know, all right, you have to represent with something else. All right. If, uh, for the first time I met Brother Erwan, all right, I will ask him, 
Oh, how long have you known Sheikh? Sheikh Ahmad Sa'ad. Oh, then we start on that. Why? Our own self is inadequate and we know that. So, placing reliance here in Allah SWT is trying to tell us that of all the representations that we have, the best representation we can have is Allah SWT. If we have Allah SWT, we don't have to depend on any other things. And that is tranquility. You know that things are resolved. Things will be resolved. That things are in control. So no matter what you go through in life, no matter what challenges, no matter what, what uh, tribulations that you face, no matter what you see how the world is going, you have always to remember this, that Allah is watching over all things. One of the things that we always overlook, especially in recent times, is that the hand of God is over all things. That Allah's hand, I'm not talking about the hand as in as a, as a physical hand or, or, or similitude, but Allah's prowess, Allah's will, Allah's wisdom is above all things. So as we look at developments in the world today, it is always important to know that Allah is watching over all this. And there is wisdom in all that's happening. It's just that we haven't, we have not unearthed it, we have not appreciated it, we have not seen it. Right? So that's why it's important. When you go through things in life and you see things in life, Allah. That's why every day we recite, when we pray, all right, it is an affirmation of the need for reliance. We say every day in our prayer, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. All praise be to Allah. Rabbil Alamin. He, all right, who is the arranger of the worlds, He who is the Lord of all the worlds. Not just the world we live in, the other worlds that we don't see. If He is the Lord of all these worlds, He is the Lord of all things that's happening in this little world we live in. There's nothing to fear. Alright? Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib, alright, the, 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 the grandfather of, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, alright, he says, I know there is a hereafter. Abdul Muttalib says, I know there is a hereafter. And this was before the Prophet was sent as a Prophet. Abdul Muttalib says, I know that for certain there's a hereafter. There's a God that's watching over us. Why? Because he knows that in my lifetime, says Abdul Muttalib, in my lifetime, if anyone does evil, I will see that this person will die in an evil manner. All right, before he will die, he will face an evil end. So when he go, he says that someone who does evil, he says in his lifetime he will meet an evil end. But there are those, all right? There are those who lead an evil life, but somehow they get away with it. They die a peaceful death. They don't die a violent death. It, there doesn't seem to be a poetic justice. Is there? He lives. A, he lives. A, he, li he 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 he's good. He is having a good life at the expense of others. He's abusing others, but he seems to get away with it. He died with all his. Comp he, he died with all his followers around him. He died wealthy. He died with. He died a peaceful death. And then Abdul Muttalib says, "Therefore, I know there is a hereafter, because you might escape this world for all the punity that he put onto people, for all the abuse, for all the aggression he put onto people. There is a hereafter." Right? There's a hereafter that's awaiting you. So when we see things in the world today, the most important thing, that's why every day Allah tells us, all right, Allahu Akbar. Right? Every day Allah tells us, Allahu Akbar. When we say in our prayer, all right, it is an affirmation to us. It's actually reminded to us. Sometimes we want to take things into our own, own hands. Sometimes we think that we can do a lot of things. We forget that we have to rely on Allah SWT. Right? Our faith is not decided by us alone. Alright, so we see things that's happening. One of the most important tools that we need to, to, to have in facing these realities is to seek Allah's help and to seek Allah's wisdom to understand things. When we see things, we cannot rely on our own wisdom and, and make our own interpretations. What is the wisdom behind what's happening in the world today? Why is it recurring? Why is it repeating? Why is it unresolved? Sometimes the way we ask questions is as though there's no God to control all things. We are questioning what Allah has decided. No. All right. Allah certainly knows what is happening in the world. All right. What's happening, what's developing, what's unfolding, He knows for certain. So it's important for us to have that certainty and to ask Allah for that certainty and wisdom to navigate the realities of the world today. Okay? So it's important. It's tranquility. So we see things, we know that Allah is in control. Always know that Allah is in control of, of things. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, throughout his time, all right, when he's faced with tribulations, there's even life threatening, he has no fear. The most popular verse in the Quran that, talk, that, 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 that best represents the Prophet's calmness is this verse, is this, is this word, is this verse, La tahzan in Allah ma'ana. Do not despair, for certainly Allah is with us. When did that happen? During his migration to, to Medina. Who did he migrate with? Abu Bakr Siddiq. So they were hiding in the cave of Sur. Right in the cave of Sur, and the, the way the curve the, the, the cave is is such that the mouth of the cave is upwards. Right? The mouth of the 
cave is upwards. You have to as when you as when you descend into the cave, right? You you have to ascend from the top and it goes downwards. So they were in the most vulnerable position in the cave whereby they were looking up. And such that the mushrikins of Mecca, all right, the, 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 the disbelievers, they were just standing at the mouth of the cave. Narration says that all they need to do, all right, was to look down. How difficult is your sense when you're looking for people is to look up or to look down? Huh? To look down, right? You never look for people. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so you look down. All right. When you're looking for people, you always look, you always look down. All right. It's, it's nature. Nature, no one look for someone in the skies. All right, you always look for something. Some, you, it's going to be there. So the nature is to look down. So Abu Bakr Siddiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, was, he was worried. He was crying. All right, he was crying. So he's mentioned in the Quran. This was narrated in the Quran. He said, Illa tan suruhu faqad nasarahullahu if akhrajahu ladhi na kafaru faniyathnain. All right, it is, it is mentioned that when the two of them, the two, the two of them, who? The Prophet and Abu Bakr Siddiq, all right, who were in the cave. If huma fil ghor, when the two of them were in the cave, if yakulu li sahibi, that one of them, the Prophet Sallallahu said to his companion, who is already despairing, who's crying, who's worried, who's is facing great uncertainty for the fate of the Prophet, the Prophet assured him, la tahzan in Allah ma'ana, do not despair. All right, in Allah ma'ana, for indeed Allah is with us. And for Allah will grant, all right, will grant tranquility upon upon him, upon he who is despairing. And will assist, all right, it will assist us in our cause, all right, with the soldiers, with his soldiers that are not seen. And he will make, he will abase. All right, the words of the disbelievers and you will raise the word of the believers. This is in the Quran. So we have to have certainty in things. All right, we have to have certainty. All right, so every day you have certainty in Allah Akbar that Allah is in control of all, of all things. So I therefore place full trust in Allah, the exalted. He is sufficient for me and he is the best disposer of affairs. And therefore, these are eight things according to Imam Hatim al Assam. All right, he says these eight things that he says that. This is sufficient. Let us look at these eight things and try now as part of our task to incorporate all these things in our life and see if it, suffi it suffices for us. Alright? You know something that we are looking for in the world today? We are always looking for something to fill us. Alright? We are doing this, we are doing that. And we have no time to actually find out for ourselves what is good for us. We are just gorging ourselves with a lot of things now. Gorging ourselves with information or misinformation. Gorging ourselves with food. Gorging ourselves with a lot of things. But we are not actually setting down to find out what is it that the soul really needs? What is the purpose of existence? Why are we here? So we are not asking, we are not asking the right questions. That's why you don't have the right actions. All right? So eight things that are beneficial. He says that if you have these eight things, it's good enough for you. What are these eight things? Let's recall. The first thing he says is to be in love of good deeds. That your, 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 your lifetime fulfillment is to just work towards achieving good deeds. When your eyes open, you're thinking of good deeds. When you open your eyes, Alhamdulillah, the first good deed you do. Alright? Then you, you treat your family well. If, you're, if you wake up and next, your spouse is next to you, you have a good deed that's presenting, presented itself before you. Alright? How you treat, how you greet the person. Alright? It's a, it's a sign of you pursuing good deeds. So your life is just being evolving between two things that you are you, you are doing worship or you are doing service. Imam Ghazali says it's just that. All right, you are either doing worship or doing service to mankind. You are worshiping your Creator. You are servicing the creations. It's just between these two, and the breaks in between to eat and the breaks in between to rest. But in between, it's all about that. That's that. So first point is to be in love of good deeds because these good deeds are the ones that's going to accompany you in the in 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 in, in the hereafter. Second. To curb desires, to enjoy, so that you can enjoy the pleasure of worship. We have worshipped Allah for so many years now. We don't feel anything about our worship. We are rushing through it. We are lazing through it. We are sleeping through our worship. How do we address that? To ensure that we have to curb our desires. Where's the best example? Ramadan. We struggle in the nights. Why? Because the desires are not curbed when we break our fast. It's a, it's a long-term desire for everyone here, right? Every year Ramadan, we say, I shall control my fast. I shall control my breakfast. But our mothers don't help us in this cause. Our mothers, our spouses, they don't help us. 
Now we have grab food is worse. All right. Uh, all the offers come in. Okay. Three. All right. Seeking to give. Now the world is everyone's accumulating. Everyone's accumulating wealth at the expense of others. Everyone's accumulating lives of people. They are just taking, taking, taking. Says Imam Hatim al Assam. Now you should start giving. Giving gives you the satisfaction. All right. Learn to give. You know, my teacher, my late teacher, he gave me this one very simple example about giving. We always worry that when we give, we get lesser. But the, uh, Allah says in the hadith, unfik unfik alik. You give and Allah shall give to you. He used to tell me this. You know, last time when he, had, he, had, he used to have classes at his house. That's why I always want to have classes at home. All right. So he used to have his classes in, in, in Petir Road, in Bukit Panjang. All right. So in his house, he lives, he, he lives in a corner unit. So he has one corner unit and then with, uh, with his, uh, and his, and his, uh, and his daughter has another unit. So it's a corner unit. So when he has classes, like both these units will be filled, the corridor will be filled. There was the classes. So he and he and one of his traits, all right, is that he will always provide food for, for his classes. Right? Always, so now people always will come to my class at home, they always say, Oh, there's always food. Yes, it's, it's a it's a tradition, it's a good thing. All right, so we have food. So one day, so one of the things he prepares, right, is teh tarik. There's always uh, teh susu, not, not teh susu. All right, uh, milk tea, milk tea. All right. So one of the things that we always drink after class is milk tea. So one day he pulled me aside, he pointed to the kettle. All right, where the, where the milk tea is. All right, where the milk tea is. And then he pointed to all the glasses that, is gonna, that, that we're going to pour the tea inside. All right. Mm. So my job last time, so I, I was, I'm proud to say this, I said this so many times before, because we're going to go about, about teachers after this. All right. My job, when I, was a, when I was a student last time, I did three things for my teacher. First thing is I'm the one, I'm the page checker. So every time before the start of the class, I'll be the one that announces to the class, what page are we reading today? 